Welcome to RetroPack, where we take a look at retro compact computers and other vintage technology. Today we're going to take a look at not just another compact portable, but the rarest one of them all, the relatively unknown Compact Portable 46. The Compact Portable 46 was the last luggable computer released by Compaq, back in 1992. This was the year when the Space Shuttle Endeavour was launched, Booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Endeavour. Oprah was on TV talking about racial inequality. Princess Diane and Prince Charles decided to separate. Most importantly, however, Cartoon Network was launched to the joy of millions of kids for years to come. Now, why did I bring this up? Well, times were changing. Mainstream culture was changing just as quickly as computers were becoming more mainstream. Prices on hardware started to come down, and the home and business PC markets were growing rapidly. Software was also becoming easier to use. Computer games were getting more immersive and sophisticated with better color graphics, with improved sound from sound cards, and even CD-ROMs for the lucky few. If you look back five years before that, in 1987, the cutting edge of technology was this, the Compact Portable 3D6 the Compact Portable 46's younger brother. This lunchbox-shaped computer cost as much as two cars at the time, and was the must-have computer for Wall Street executives. I recommend you check out that video on it first if you haven't already. It was a powerful and revolutionary computer with 10 megabytes of RAM and a flat gas plasma display, a big upgrade from the traditional bulky CRT-based Compact Portables before it. Then nine years later, in 1992, Compact released the Compact Portable 46. This computer was a little less revolutionary in terms of technical innovation, but is just as noteworthy. It is the last of its kind, the last luggable computer made by Compaq, the company that made its name by making the world's first IBM-compatible portable computers. So why did the luggable disappear? Well, as I'm sure you've already guessed, they were killed off from mainstream computing by the laptop. The battle between the heavyweight luggable and the nimble laptop was not won overnight. Early laptops were a little more than novelties, being extremely underpowered to save on battery life with tiny, hard-to-read screens and small hard disks. They were also bulky, sometimes only slightly less heavy than an AC-powered luggable. Luggables, on the other hand, were large and heavy, but for the extra weight, you got power and performance. Luggables were not designed to run on batteries, so they used faster, more power-hungry CPUs and components. Their displays were usually larger and brighter than early laptops, as they ran off AC power. Though as time went on and technology improved, laptops began to evolve away from their monochrome displays, limited battery life, poor design quality, and low horsepower. By the time 1992 rolled around, IBM launched the ThinkPad, one of the first laptops that earned the title of a true desktop replacement. This pretty much spelled the end of the luggable, and in the case of the Compact Portable 46, it really couldn't compete in the general market. It was more expensive and much less portable than a slim yet powerful laptop like the IBM ThinkPad. Most business executives chose the laptop and labeled the bulky luggable as old-fashioned and out of date. The Compact Portable 46 did find a niche as a tool for portable sales presentations with its bright screen and ability to run an ISA sound card. It also appealed to those who needed power, portability, and expandability with its eISA slots, but still, the audience was rather limited compared to the growing laptop market. Compaq knew this was coming. By the late 1980s, they knew these newfangled laptops were the wave of the future, and they began developing their own laptop computers, starting with the SLT-286, a very thick laptop that came with a built-in carrying handle and removable keyboard, a bit like a mini luggable. In addition to making the SLT, Compaq did try hard to differentiate the Compaq Portable 46 from high-end laptops, giving the computer pretty high-end specs for 1992, with an upgradable CPU, space for lots of RAM, and most importantly, a built-in large and clear active matrix screen. The Compaq Portable 46, just like the Portable 3D6, comes with a handle, though it's much smaller and it also moved away from the lunchbox form factor to the briefcase shape of the 46. The screen is accessed by unclipping the keyboard, which folds out. Then, to adjust the viewing angle, you simply push in the buttons on the side and push. On the left side, you have access to the two ISA slots, a VGA out, and an unusual input sound jack that allows you to pipe your sound card output through the internal speaker, which is a pretty neat feature that must have come in handy when giving presentations on the go. Now, at the rear of the unit, we have the usual PS2 mouse and keyboard sockets, a SCSI port, 
an external storage module connector, which I'm not entirely sure what that is. If you know, please leave a comment below. And a parallel port and a serial port, all of which can be hidden with a sliding door. Now, just like an exotic car, the most exciting stuff is under the hood, which is easily accessed by removing the outer casing and then the metal shielding underneath. The layout of the components and system board is well designed to make the best use of space. The system board is flushed against the back of the casing. It slots into a separate I.O. board that houses the external peripheral connectors. Taking a closer look at the system board, we can see that it's organized with RAM slots on the left, enough for a whopping 32 megabytes, a crazy amount for 9092. In the center, we have a socketed 46 CPU, allowing for upgradability, and under that we have a Dallas real-time clock chip. Moving back to our current setup. On the right, we have the eISA card slots, currently populated with a Vandom ISA compact flash card adapter and a Creative Lab sound card. Now behind these two cards, we have the onboard VGA card, which passes its VGA signal to the active matrix display in front. Other than that, the Portable 46 has a standard 210MB IDE hard drive and a 1.44MB floppy disk drive. The main selling point for this computer was its bright, active, flat panel display. Pretty large for 1992, with only a few laptops being able to match its size. Active Matrix, if you didn't know, was a really big deal in the early 90s, with most laptops using Passive Matrix to save on costs at the expense of visual clarity. Active Matrix was pretty much a must though for gaming, giving a presentation, or any kind of application where lots of on-screen movement is involved. Just check out this Passive Matrix laptop on the left, compared to the Active Matrix of the Compact Portable 46. Though I probably couldn't afford an Active Matrix back in 1992, I sure wish I had one. Doom looks pretty painful to play in Passive Matrix. The Compact Portable 46 was a premium computer aimed at a niche business market, targeting those who needed performance and expandability over portability and who also had a pretty big budget. In a way, this computer represents the end of an era for Compaq, the last luggable from the company that made its name selling luggables. After the Portable 46, Compaq focused on the desktop, server, and laptop markets, but they never returned to make another portable or luggable computer. What do you think? Would you have bought one of these back in 1992? I personally like the idea of a portable desktop computer. Would have been pretty handy come to think of it, though it does take up a bit more desk space. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, thank you for taking the time to watch. If you enjoy retro computers, please take a moment to like this video. And if you want to see more compacts and other vintage technology, please consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching.